for cross encounters Reaching out to who we once were Liars, mockers, thieves, and doubters Preaching hope in Christ the Savior two verses to the Romans in chapter 8 is true, for I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. If God sets you free, you will be free indeed, and no one, not even yourself, will be able to put you back into slavery again. Slavery to sin. Because those whom God frees, he keeps. Those whom Christ redeems, he keeps. And no one can snatch one of his out of his hands. Talk about the tithe. Talk about the tithe. Why would I talk about the tithe? It's not necessary. It's not necessary. Those on TBN, those hucksters, those charlatans, those false prophets, those liars and thieves and scoundrels and thousand dollar suits and tons of gold would have you believe that if you give X amount of dollars to their ministry, you will receive a hundred back in return. That is a lie from the pit of hell. That is a lie. That is a lie from unbelieving, unscrupulous men and women who only want to line their pockets with the money of the poor. So I don't give God 10 percent. God doesn't say you have to give a percentage. No, the, no. The Jews were required to give not only 10 percent; they were required to give well into the 20s, almost 30 percent, because they gave not only of their money, but they gave of their livestock, they gave of their uh, produce, they gave of their crops. But nowhere in, the, nowhere in the New Testament are we told that we must give a, pers a specific amount to the work of the Lord. The Word of God says that He loves a generous giver. That we are not to give begrudgingly. And so if that is one penny from a poor person or a billion dollars from a rich person, so long as it's given uh, generously, so long as it's not given Un, so long as it's not given begrudgingly or under compulsion, God receives that. But my friends, if you are giving to God because you expect to receive something in return, you are an idolater. You're an idolater. You don't love God, you love what you expect from God. You're an idolater and you need to repent and come to faith in Jesus Christ. If you believe in a God that promises health, wealth, and prosperity, you are an idolater. You've created a God in your imagination to suit yourself because you love money and not God. You cannot serve both God and money. Nowhere in the Word of God does it say that you will be rich. Nowhere in the Word of God does it say that God promises you perfect health. Nowhere in the Word of God does it say that. In fact, Jesus said, if you seek to live a godly life, you will be persecuted. Jesus said, you should expect trouble and sorrow and tribulation in this life but to take care do not worry do not fear because Jesus Christ has overcome the world if your desire are gold and riches and big houses and good jobs then you do not worship the Christ you are an idolater and you need to repent stop watching TBN Paul Crouch doesn't care for your soul. Paula White does not care for your soul. Benny Hinn does not care for your soul. Uh, the Copelands do not care for your soul. Frederick Casey Price does not care for your soul. Marilyn Hickey does not care for your soul. Joyce Meyer does not care for your soul. None of them care for your soul. They care for your wallet and they want it. They want it. 
So stop being an idolater. Stop worshiping people. Stop worshiping false messages. Stop worshiping a false gospel. Stop waiting for God to line your pocket for goods. If all you want is your best life now, then all you have to look forward to is hell. Stop listening to Joel Osteen. He doesn't care for your soul. He doesn't care for your soul. He wants your wallet. He wants your wallet. Why do you think he sells millions and millions of books? Because the gospel is not in it. People want to have their ears tickled. People want to hear how they're really a good person and that God is going to promise to heal all their diseases and pay all their bills and fix all their relationships when God hasn't promised any of that in his word. It sells because lies sell. So stop listening to Joel Osteen. Stop watching TBN. Stop going to these stadiums for fake healings at the hands of, of sinful men who know not the Christ. Stop looking for your best life now and turn to Christ and live. Turn to Christ and live. And his promise is far better than a wallet full of money. His promise is far better than all of your bills being paid. His promise better than never again another visit to the doctor. The promise of Christ is a future hope. It's an eternal hope stored up for those who repent and believe in heaven. And that's why Christians not only tolerate this world, but find joy in the midst of trials. Because they look to Christ. Because they look to Christ. James, Jesus' half-brother who denied him for most of his life, would later write one of the most important letters in the Word of God, and he said this, Consider it all joy, my friends, my brothers, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance, and let endurance have its perfect result, so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. The Word of God does not promise the end of your trials. Faith in Christ promises the ability to endure those trials with authentic joy, knowing that this is not your home, knowing that you are not merely a citizen of this earth, but an eternal glory awaits you with Christ in heaven. That's good news. That's hope. That's where peace is found. The crouches can't offer you peace. They can only offer you spiritual poverty. Paula White cannot offer you peace. She can only offer you spiritual poverty. Frederick Casey Price cannot offer you peace. He can only offer you spiritual poverty. T.D. Jakes cannot offer you peace. He can only offer you spiritual poverty. Benny Hinn cannot offer you peace. He can only offer you spiritual poverty. So turn to Christ and live. Do not seek your best life now. Do not go down the road that leads to destruction, that broad road that leads to destruction that Joel Osteen is on. Do not go down that road. Do not follow a wolf in sheep's clothing. You will find your peace in Christ and in Christ alone. Pray this day that God will lift the veil from your eyes and that you will be able to see the truth and that the truth will set you free. And there is freedom only in Jesus Christ. Turn to Christ and live. Thank you for listening.